Welcome everyone to another episode of Comic Movie Marks. My name is Matt, and I am one half of the Movie Marks. Next to me is my co-host Shane. What? No witty adjectives this week? Cutting the intro for time purposes, that's fucking stupid. Today we will revisit Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Now that WB has pulled their heads out of their collective asses and gave us the true version of Batman vs. Superman. We will discuss all the new additions and changes that some dickless douchebag thought they could remove. Ha <laughs> ha, alliteration. Let's hit record and hope this shit works this time and show people what rated R freaking means. This is the Batman vs. Superman Ultimate Cut Review. Again. Okay, first off, we're going to start this thing by saying fuck the MPAA, fuck Warner Brothers, fuck the critics, and fuck Audacity. You stupid audio recorder bastard file thingy. <laughs> I stayed up until 9 on Thursday, and this fucker, <laughs> this fucker didn't record when we did that whole beautiful golden show, which you'll never hear. Yep, uh, our best show to date that no one will ever hear because, and th this wasn't us. I'm going to lay that out there right now. This was not us. Not pressing record, which has happened, but we figured it out early enough. Or the mic was on mute. <laughs> right. This was, we're watching the it record as we're going, and then eventually a little glitch, and boom, an hour and 20 minutes completely gone of gold. We actually could speak well. Yeah, we were using <laughs> intriguing words, <laughs> yes. not interesting. <laughs> and now we're back to ridiculous and interesting. Yes, because this ridiculous <laughs> fucking program just <laughs> fucked us in the thing. Oh, man. So <laughs> let's, okay, first let's get into the movie now again. Let's rewind and go back into this movie. So my first part of this with the Batman versus Superman ultimate cut is why is this bitch even rated R? I don't even get it because right now we got a middle finger in the beginning of the movie when that special ops team is flipping off the drone as it goes by, which one is hilarious. They right. seem to cut a lot of the humor out of this movie. Yeah, There's a small, a small blood splatter as the African troops are getting shot. A bunch of minions get shot and a, couple, a little bit of blood. Mm -hmm. And then we have fuck being used once, maybe twice. You were telling me before that the Santos guy, the sex trafficker yeah. guy... When he was cussing out, the, when he was freaking out with the cops, he may have said it again. Yeah. I didn't hear that one. But, so, fuck, once used or t once or twice. Okay. And then we got bat ass. So, right. we get to see Ben Affleck's ass. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, why? I guess he re he worked out hard for this role, and he wants his workout scene, and he wants his ass on TV. Yeah, yep, exactly. So, yeah, he, he said, I can keep up with Henry Cavill, look at me, and we're going to show my bat ass. Yeah, <laughs> it was beautiful. No, no. <laughs> I paused that scene for hours. Anyway, yeah. then you have the broken arms when Batman's fighting those guys in the warehouse. You got a couple broken arms. Then you have the compound fracture where the bone is sticking out. Okay, I guess that's kind of brutal. Mm-hmm. And then you got some Cinemax sex there with uh, Lois and Clark. Yeah, they add, added a little little bit to that. Clark takes his shirt off. She kind of... She gives he, him a back rub yeah, as he's yeah. dry. Is that dry humping if they're in the tub? That's, oh, that's, a, that's a good question. I'm, yes, that's a full... <laughs> yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to do some research on that. Yes, research, comment below, let us know if it's considered dry humping inside yeah. of a bathtub. So I wanted to point something out. In the X-Men movies, we've had... Hugh Jackman's ass present in the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. They show his ass. Fuck was used in the Apocalypse movie when he when Magneto turns around, looks at Apocalypse, says, who the fuck are you? And then there's a part where one in Apocalypse where Wolverine is released because this is back in the 80s and it's mm -hmm. the Weapon X program. And they're in the laboratory and Jean Grey and Cyclops release him. And he just goes berserk, starts slicing motherfuckers up. And, right. I mean, there's blood everywhere. And they're showing him with the Animantium Claws now, and he's just slicing on these guys. They're not showing the guys exactly, but they're just showing him slicing. These people are in pieces. Right. <laughs> and they're and he kills a lot of people. There is a lot of soldiers. He just walks through and just kills a bunch of them. And later on in the movie, they even show it. The people are walking through, and there's just puddles of blood everywhere. And all those movies were rated PG-13. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand how this one got R. I, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense why this one got R compared to the X-Men, which have been able to push that boundary and get the PG-13 rating. Right. Even in the Apocalypse movie, there's uh, when the first four horsemen are trying to help uh, Apocalypse transfer his body or whatever it was, you have that assassin that's trying to come in. He tries to jump. 
from a high peak, I don't know what the hell he was doing, to try to stab Apocalypse. And the, one of these four horsemen's powers, apparently, is just to make you a fucking cube. So she just crunches the <laughs> shit out of him, and it just you can hear the bones snapping right. and breaking. And she crunches him and makes him a little recycled cube and just chucks his ass. And then again, PG-13. And yes, yes, all PG-13. So where... This movie is considered R. I don't understand. I was born in the 90s where rated R movies were advertised <laughs> right. to kids. I had Robocop toys, Terminator toys, all the good stuff. I was grew up during the Attitude Era of wrestling. Yeah. So maybe I'm a little desensitized. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a little. Yeah. I. Well, the first thing I noticed is there's a clear difference between the theatrical cut and the Ultimate Edition, not just the scenes and stuff, which we'll get into it was again. <laughs> again you can see the like the warehouse scene with batman where he hucks the crate at the guy and then yeah. he, you know he gets slammed up against the wall and there's a huge blood splatter the africa scene when they're shooting the people there's blood everywhere and they're torching them yeah I didn't yeah forget about that yeah so there there was parts to me where i'm like okay i could see this being r but that was before you had explained it the first time around, of you know, with the uh, X Men apocalypse and stuff, of like, wait, no, this this was PG thirteen, and and they're saying for some reason Batman versus Superman is is R rated. So the yeah. uh, the only thing that it leads me to believe is the the rumors that people were saying that it was a marketing ploy by Warner Brothers. Right when Deadpool came out and it had so much success, Warner Brothers said, "Well, the ultimate cut that comes out on Blu ray." is going to be rated R, and that got everyone talking like, oh, what's going to make it rated R? Not that Warner Brothers can dictate what the, the MPAA rating is, but maybe they do kind of have a way of like, hey, let's push this to R, because other than, you know, like you mentioned, a couple things, there's blood splatters and stuff, which could have easily been taken out. Yeah, they're CGI'd. Right, splits. yeah. Yeah, so again, th that's also not the reason why it's just a Blu-ray release that's rated R, and not the theatrical version, they could have released the three hours in theaters, cut out some of the blood, if that's what pushed it to R, which yeah. is still kind of debatable. They could have been left the, exactly the same and still been PG-13 in the movie left at three, or in the theater, sorry, left at three hours. Yeah. Someone's got to do some research on this eventually someday and try to figure out how this came about. Right, the guidelines. And yeah. Yeah, they got the guidelines and so mm -hmm. forth. What 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 exactly makes a movie rated R? And I was actually looking and I saw a small clip where someone said that it was rated R because of intense violence. And I'm like, yeah, it's got some violence, but I've seen way more violent movies. Right. I mean, well, just like I just said, the yeah, X-Men movie yeah. had way more violence, I guess, because they're mutants. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's weird. And one of the things that pushed these movies to PG-13 was the amount of sci-fi violence or violence in general. So what... What dictates the shift to rated R? It's just the the blood, couple FUs, and uh, the middle finger, I guess. Yeah, I guess <laughs> people, it's hard to accept a middle finger. Yeah. Putting off a drum yeah. as it goes by. Yeah, maybe they're trying to go the reverse way of, of how society's evolved. And, oh, no, this can be considered PG-13. Now they're trying to push it the other way. No, that's that's R. Yeah. <laughs> I just That's, that's too vulgar. So uh, let's go into know. the movie now. Yeah, all right, so we'll start with the Metropolis scene. Right off the bat, you you can see the differences in this movie. There, Even before the Metropolis scene in the intro, there's parts where the movie, the it kind of allows it to breathe a little bit more. Yeah, it stay, it, you know, they take more time with it. Yeah, it's and, slow. Or right, and I, I noticed it right off the bat. And so then you get to the Metropolis scene, and there there's parts that are different that, that just make you wonder... Why they they cut these parts out? It it's it's really weird because it adds a whole lot to to the movie itself. So in the Metropolis scene, they show kids w with an adult, maybe on a field trip or something, right. to the Wayne. Yeah, to, to, to the Wayne collapse, the class yeah, building of the, the yeah, West Wayne building. Yeah, so they're they're trying to you know they're kind of using the buddy system and then they're making their way through, which also explains why the girl was randomly standing there and Bruce Wayne has to save her. Yeah, you see these kids, and originally it was a horse. Right, yeah. yeah. A horse comes trotting by. <laughs> so for some reason, thought somebody thought, hey, 
let's freaking replace kids with a horse. Even though you can sell, this is probably like some kind of daycare system, actually. Y- yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah Wayne Enterprise, too. big building. They probably mm-hmm. yeah, employ these kids and stuff. It's probably a daycare system, and the woman was able to evacuate the, ki- evacuate the kids beforehand. Right. And the one gets left behind. But for some reason, some asshat thought that it would be great to have a horse there instead. Yeah, and cut out. But that I, I there was a lot of complaints of, why is that girl randomly standing in the middle of nowhere right. that, that Bruce Wayne has to save her anyways? Well, that's why. Because yeah. she was being funneled out, and then... And she stayed behind for whatever reason. And so I thought that was a, a great intro into this new cut of the movie of automatically you're like, wait, that's that's way different. It's a little bit deeper. Um, you know, the, the kids are, are kind of scared. And yeah, there's multiple kids that just lost their parents. Yeah, yeah. And so, just this one random kid in right. a horse. Yeah, so uh, right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat, it's it's completely different, and it gets you wondering like, why was that even cut out? Why was that even changed? I yeah. See again, I don't understand what asshole thought that. Oh hey, I think it'd be better if we just have a stray horse right in the middle of a downtown. Yeah, so that 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 doesn't even necessarily save any time changing right. it from the kids to a horse. No, it, it it just completely changes the movie altogether and then le- leaves people wondering like, okay, there's a random girl standing there and her mom was in the building and, yeah. you know, he, it leaves you confused. So, uh, I, I don't know. It, we're we're going to get into a lot more of that stuff. Then jump into the Africa scene. We get to see more of Jimmy Olsen. Uh, it, there's a, a little bit more of uh, banter back and forth between him and Lois, which is kind of cool. Again, uh, they cut out some of the funnier parts. Yeah. I can't remember the other reporter's name, but she's like, you know what this other guy and I talk about a lot? He's like, what? Nothing. Nothing. That's why I liked him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, then, and you get to see more personality from from Lois. Right. You know, and and then they, they get into the uh, the Jeep or whatever, and, and they're getting transported yeah. so that she can do the interview. And you can kind of see how... Lois is a little more naive to the situation of uh, she's just she's there to do a job. Yeah, she's and, getting her scoop on this very pair, uh, very popular terrorist apparently. Right. Yeah. So and she's just trying to focus on that. Then the the t- the other guys who are transporting them explain, hey, no cameras, no cell phones, none of this, that that kind of stuff. So a whole a whole slew of uh, of extra stuff that you that you get to see that adds a little bit more to the scene itself before you actually get into to other important parts of that that scene and then we get to the point where Lois is going to interview General Terrace and then he has a great quote yeah and the quote and this is what this is a very important quote to set up your whole movie but the general terrorist looks at Lois and says men with power don't follow policy or principle no one is different no one is neutral. Yep. That that's foreshadowing your whole movie there. The sentiment and the feelings that Lex Luthor and Batman, Batman have, have yeah. for Superman. And that is that just sets up the whole movie right yeah, there. And it, you cut it out. Yeah. And he's talking in sense of the United States because Lois Lane says that the US has decided to stay neutral within your civil war. And he's saying it in terms of that, but it's such a great quote for this whole movie. Oh, yeah. And especially, like you said, for Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne and Batman, you know, of how they feel about this this alien who comes in and you cut it out for some reason. Yeah, it's, I, it's a perfect feeling because Lex and Batman feel like no one is different. No one is neutral. That yeah. is exactly what Batman says later on to Alfred. Yeah. If, in, if, if there's even a 1% chance that he could, you know, destroy us, we have to take yep. it as a threat. Yeah. And so, and this just sets it up so well. You just don't have this random, I mean, it just, it's basic storytelling. Right. And it's just a nice little setup for foreshadowing mm-hmm. of the feelings that Lex and Batman have. And you just got rid of it. For yeah. Whatever reason. Yeah. Save a little bit of time. I don't know. It, it, it's weird. And then you get into the part where... In in the theatrical version, when we're watching the movie, you can kind of assume, okay, you know, they they shoot all the all the people, they're taken off on the motorcycles, and there's like some fire going up or whatever. Right. Somehow they're they're framing Superman, which is uh, weird. It's like, why would Superman <clears throat> shoot people? Yeah, and I kind of uh, filled in the blanks. Okay, there's there's probably a little bit more going on with that whole thing, but they in this version they actually fill in the blank for you, and yeah. they show KG Beast flamethrowing people oh, yeah you know and then then they they stack they're stacking up the charred bodies of all the the dead people and and that is where 
they lead you to okay, Superman yeah, is the one who killed it. Yeah, yeah he could have eye lasered everybody. You right, know, fried them, them all up. Yeah. yeah, screwed them all up. And now you kind of get this set up. And then the me- and we find out later on that the bullets had some special untraceable metals on mm-hmm. them and stuff like that. And there's some wonkiness to that. So it kind of sets this whole thing up of like, oh, Superman could have really killed these people. So, it, and But yet you cut it out again. Yeah. You just cut it out. And then you have the drone strike. Then you have that special ops team Python that's trying to go recover Lois because we got a friendly on the ground. Right. And then they're sending in this, and the, whoever it is, the CIA or the military says, fuck that, we're going to bomb them anyway. Mm-hmm. Flying in a drone, then you get Superman to come in with this great save. Yeah, yep, S- saves the two, which at first I was thinking to to myself, okay, that would have just totally ruined Lex's plan about manipulating that whole thing. But you see KG Beast, after you know the two drones explode, he kind of turns to the camera and smirks a little bit. Yeah. Of like, oh, this is working out perfectly. Missile and, he, and drone, not two drones. Y- yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so he... Uh, he kind of turns to the camera and uh, and and kind of has this smirk. And at first, uh, like it, took, it worked. Yeah, exactly. It took me a little bit to to kind of piece that together. But like, okay, because otherwise that would have just completely ruined that whole Africa thing. And then Lex would be like, "Shit, now I have to do some other manipulation or whatever." But that that worked perfectly and gives Zack Snyder credit. They have that shot of KG Beast of going, "Okay, perfect. Everything's." Lining up exactly how we wanted it to. We're about to frame your ass, and you don't even know it. Right. It comes crashing in, has to save Lois, and and there's that whole thing. So, again, it, just building to, adding to to this movie that I already really enjoyed when we saw it in the theaters three times, and and just adding to that whole thing made me love it even more. Well, now it's making sense, and you're starting to see Lex Luthor's plan mm-hmm. come into action. And I, you know, when the, I remember when this movie first came out in the theatrical version, uh, people were saying this movie should have been cut down to ninety minutes, and I thought that was just stupid. Mm-hmm. Why would you cut this movie down to ninety minutes? Now seeing this part, I feel like it either had to be three hours or it had to be ninety minutes, right? To be a functional movie, yeah. To be, a, I mean, I don't mind filling in the gaps, but there's people that don't like filling in the gaps, right? And I, I think that's where a lot of the divisiveness of this movie has come is there's the people who were able to kind of fill things in like okay the africa scene makes sense to me because i can fill in all this stuff in my mind and okay perfect it it makes sense and then other people look at it and go no that doesn't make any sense at all superman wouldn't shoot people you didn't explain anything there's actually some other complaints after the ultimate edition came out that i've seen online that i'll I'll get into it once we reach that point but there, there's definitely people out there that want the movie to tell you exactly everything that's going on. No, no filling in the gaps. And one thing that I noticed right away is if if you hated Lex Luthor, hopefully this kind of broadened a little bit more, and you could see how twisted he is, how much he's manipulating everything. In 90 minutes, I don't know if you could if you could do that. You'd probably just kind of have. Well, a I think you would just have to like basically make it. No Africa scenes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to cut out all those Africa scenes and right. kind of make it almost just a straight up Batman v Superman. Right. Yeah. Drop you would. Lex. Yeah. And no Doomsday. I don't know how Wonder Woman comes in the mix if she ever does. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't bring the Trinity together in this one. Maybe they just show her a lot, but the Trinity never quite comes together. I don't know what a ninety minute version would look like, but it just feels like these Africa scenes and then the congressional hearings and mm-hmm. all that stuff that was going on. It just seemed like, okay, well, even when you do fill in the blanks, I was wrong. Because I remember when I was filling in the blanks, I was like, oh, they're they're mad at Superman for being involved in an international incident. Mm-hmm. Because he's an American citizen landing right. on international soil and causing issues. Which is, in this world, that's the problem. You can't right. fly over international air. You can't right. do stuff like that. Especially because he's considered a U.S. citizen. Yeah, he's considered a U.S. citizen. So... So doing things like that, interfering in international incidents can cause an issue. And I thought that's mm-hmm. what people were complaining about. And then the government turns on the people because there was this American citizen or this interference. So the government turned on the people and started slaughtering people. That's why I thought that one woman was complaining about the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it turns out she had a whole different story. And, right. and this whole thing was actually a literal setup that, that Superman killed these people. Because right. you hear Lois at the very end in the theatrical cut or near the end of the movie when she's talking to that secretary guy. Like, oh, if you believe that Superman killed these people, then don't 
research this bullet. Right. And I'm like, wait, what? And so I kind of filled in that blank, and then she calls it all right back, saying about him killing people. Right. So I was like, ah, okay. See, that's where that shocking is. I'm confused, yeah. Yeah, That's where, when you try to fill in the blanks, it sometimes screws you, because you're making up reasons, and eh, that didn't work out. And there's other parts here in this movie that we find out that I screwed up as well. I didn't... I've tried to fill in the blanks on, and it didn't happen. So. Yeah. So why they cut out these these parts is is beyond me because it it just it adds to to Lex Luthor. You you see what he's doing. You see how much he's manipulating. I actually ev- like Lex. everything. I like Lex after this a little bit more. Yeah. I've yeah. I've gotten it, really it, used to this Lex, and I I actually <clears throat> liked him a lot more. Mm-hmm. Just wish he would have wiped his nose at the end. I wish that would have been in the cut. <laughs> so. No, that's perfect. I, I liked it. So uh, then we get to the the Gotham PD scene. You get to see the cops, you know, kind of sitting there in their in their car. They're watching actually a football game. Which I want to note that uh, Metropolis was beating Gotham fifty eight to nothing. And then they throw a touchdown at the end and a fright breaks out. So not only can Superman whoop Batman's ass, Metropolis has the better football team. And I think that's what they were foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was the strength of Metropolis compared to Batman yeah. to compared to Gotham. Yeah, exactly. Which we had talked about this in the last time we fucking recorded this. But this was a scene that, that we didn't really get to see a whole lot. But it was the first part of the build to this movie as they were making it. Yeah, that was the first stuff that was released, was yeah. the jerseys and yeah. them talking about shooting this. Yeah. Yeah, so we got to see a, a, a whole new part. Well, I, they they actually fill it in. The only part that they used it for was when they, they're at the Daily Planet and you see Wallace Keefe getting arrested and he's getting put in the cop car and it's just off to the side a little bit. And and you get to see. How the fuck do you see? That? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was I noticed the football. And I was like, hey, there it is. There's that scene that they Just... they brought in a crap load of extras for, and that's all they're gonna use it. Yeah, it was, I was I was really confused by that. But actually, it 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 kind of goes to the dynamic of how Metropolis is versus how Gotham is, because there's also a part where Perry White, which his lines were butchered in this entire movie. Everybody bitched about the humor. And Perry White has the humor. Yeah. Yeah, it was was great. And so there's a part where he wants Clark to go and do a report on this specific football game. And he says, be careful going into Gotham because someone might take your lunch money or something. Yeah, don't get your lunch money taken. Yeah, yeah. So (laughs) (laughs) it's it's like, you know, just adds to, to this movie. And there is humor. There is humor in it. Zack Snyder can do both incredibly deep and serious Throw a little bit of humor in it, and and they they completely cut it out. And whoever decided to make these edits completely fucked them. So in that Batman scene where the cops show up again, then now there's these other changes that have nothing to do with time. Mm-hmm. So as the cop is going up the steps with his gun, he can hear the uh, the guy scream, the sex offender, or excuse me, the sex trade Trafficker. guy, Santos. Yeah. So you hear him scream as the guys at the cop as the cop is at the bottom of the steps, mm-hmm. and as he's about halfway up, you hear him yell, "I don't know, man." Yeah. And then at the top, you get another scream. And the theatrical version, it was just screams. Yeah. He's at the bottom, scream, at the top, scream. Right. That's it. Why are you cutting that out? Yeah. What that, does that do? Yeah, What nothing. does that prevent? What I mean, you you actually feel like now that Batman was trying to interrogate him, not just beating the hell out of him, <laughs> so he's right. screaming. And branding him. Yeah. yeah. So... He was trying to fi- figure something out. Yeah, and- he was actually trying to get information before. It just sounds like he's beating the fuck out of yeah. the guy for no reason. And in the theatrical version, the only part that you can kind of gain of like, okay, apparently he was interrogating this guy was when he shows up to the Batcave. And this part was obviously also in the ultimate cut. And then Alfred's asking him about how did it go last night or whatever. And he says, oh, the- he was too low level. He didn't know anything. So you you can kind of say, okay, well, so he's apparently asking him questions yeah he was trying to get information from yeah. him not just beating the crap out right, of him because but, he's a sex trafficker but yeah but it, they don't really show that in the actual scene itself and like you said it's it was, had nothing to do three with words. time yeah three words it, and they cut it out for some reason and this happens throughout the movie yeah uh, people's voices seem to go beyond the scene that they're in right and it kind of adds this context of what's going on you hear more what's going on in mm-hmm. the scenes You know, they show somebody else doing something, but you can still hear the voices going on. Right. And it adds these, it gives you that little bit of context without having to see the person. Right, exactly. And they cut it all out. And why? Why? Yeah. Seriously, someone's got to do a documentary on this. (laughs) Yeah. Because there's there's some weird shit going on here that someone thought that this was going to work. Right. I didn't have uh, any problems the first time watching it with the pacing. Of this movie, I thought it was fine. That was one of the biggest complaints from a lot of people was right. that it was really choppy. 
But now I can see what people were expecting because each scene, they hold on certain parts a little bit longer, allow the scene to breathe a little bit more and add a little bit more to each scene. There's a part, you know, when they're, when the Santos guy is, is saying that I don't know anything, that allows you see the cop a little bit more going up the stairs and just adds to the feel of the movie itself. It didn't, it, it took a lot away by taking that out, but it didn't, it added just enough to the scene to, to make it feel better, you know, when you're watching it. And it, it, it just, it, it's blows my mind. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so then we get into the apartment building scene, which is a, a completely new scene. So uh, Clark shows up to Gotham. He's he's doing more research on this Bat vig- Vigilante, which Perry White told him specifically not to do. Just In very to, comical fashion. Right, yeah, just to drop the whole thing, and he decides to pursue it anyways. And you get to kind of see where Clark it, where his side of, of everything is a lot more. Oh, yeah. it, he's reading the articles about how the bat branding leads to to deaths in the jails. And in this part in particular, when he, he goes to the apartment building, he's trying to talk to the African, the African lady. woman. Yeah. That yeah. told that story mm-hmm. on Capitol Hill because she's also on the news, which they added in. Right. She's also on the news talking crap about Superman. He, yeah. How would he feel if he confronted his victims or whatever the hell she said? <laughs> yeah. How, how does he decide who lives yeah, and who, who dies? Exactly. A, a yeah. great additional quote that they cut out for whatever reason. And then my favorite part, which I actually thought it was a blind guy at first. It turned it was just some guy hanging out, scratching off a, a lottery ticket or something. Yeah. But he he's sitting down and he says, "There's a new kind of mean in him. He's angry and he's hunting." hunting. Which this is a perfect layout of how this Batman is. People bitch that this is oh Batman wouldn't kill and blah 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 and all this stuff. No, he is telling you. Uh, wait, I, I I noticed something different in this Batman. Yeah, some random guy yep. is seeing the difference in this Batman that he's mean and he's hunting. Yep. So this kind of explains his temperament towards killing. Right. And they they explain uh, now and the they, branding. And, yeah, and the brandings, and he's just out for vengeance now. Yep. He's just gonna get what he wants no matter what. Yeah, and doesn't care. Yeah, and so he doesn't. Yeah, and it's it's great examples of building up a kind of a background, a story. For these characters and giving them some motivation, yeah. But again, they cut it out, and why I don't know. I don't yeah. even know why you have Superman's name in this thing because he's barely in it, <laughs> yeah. and you kept cut out all the scenes, right? Him yeah. and Lois, all their scenes are cut out. Yeah, it, it, and again, this is just this was a great scene that for whatever reason they cut it out. And when you're watching the Ultimate Edition, or you're just asking yourself why because it was it was awesome. It adds to. The, the new type of Batman that we're seeing, which I thought was awesome, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You got, right. to see a, you got to see the ultimate side yep. and the ultimate edition <laughs> yep, exactly. of Batman. Well, you get to see how Batman, there's the scene with, with Alfred when he drops the newspaper and says, new rules, Master Bruce, or something like that. Yeah. And, and Batman, he just shrugs it off like, no, we've always been criminals, Alfred. So you get to see this this dark and pretty uh, not twisted Batman, but he's he's more brutal. And then at the end, he's saying men are still good. You get to see this whole change in the Batman, growth, this growth yeah. in the character, yeah, and 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 growth because of what he went through with Superman. You know, and the the whole Martha scene that some people hated, and the way that these characters evolve is is awesome not just in this movie but i i guarantee that once we start to justice league comes out and wonder woman and even suicide squad i'm sure you'll start to see how these these characters are evolving in this world and then maybe people will stop bitching about everything <laughs> so then we start getting this whole lex luther plan really coming out you have the part now where uh lex is trying to get his transport license for the kryptonite right and because uh, it's radioactive, so he's talking to that Senator June Finch. Mm-hmm. And there's the part where she uh, comes into his office. Yeah. And we get a, we get an interesting piece of exposition here from Lex. Yeah. Of possibilities that Lex Luthor Sr., because this is Lex Luthor Jr., mm-hmm. is still alive. Right. Yeah. And uh, going back to kind of the, the choppiness of the film that people complain about, this was actually the only scene when I was first watching it that, that was just a blur. It happened uh, in the theatrical version, happened really quick. And I was like, OK, that was kind of kind of odd. I, I liked what what they were saying. I, I liked the dynamic between the senator and, and Lex Luthor. But in, in this, there's a little bit more of her kind of walking into the room. They have a little bit more back and forth. 
And then there's the part that you were talking about where Lex is saying he's talking about the room and how he how he kept everything the same. And he says, maybe one day dad will come back if I keep everything the same. Magical thinking of little orphan boys. So it makes you wonder like, wait, OK, so Lex Luthor Sr. is could still be alive. And yep. he, maybe he just abandoned his fortune. And uh, left everything there. And yeah. so he's hoping he'll come back someday. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely a a very intriguing scene mm-hmm. because this kind of spills something out that there's a chance that there's another Lex Luthor out there and you might get that Lex Luthor right. that people wanted. We kind of got the sniveling one. And so now we may even have dual Lex Luthers yeah. in future Superman or Justice League movies. Right. So that's crazy. Who knows how that's going to go down? Yeah. But it also, having this quote in there, having Lex Luthor Jr. talk about that makes me think that there's a plan for it down the few, you know, down the line in future films of that maybe, like you said, Lex Luthor Sr. will come back. It it just it opens up a whole new gambit of of possibilities. Yeah. So now we have also where they go back to Clark going through Gotham trying to figure out what's going on, and he finds out that, and this is another scene they cut. They find out that Santos, the sex trafficker, got murdered. He got shanked in jail, and we find out that it's KG Beast. Yeah. Setting up these. These killings, right. trying to make Batman look worse than what he is. Mm-hmm. See, and this is where filling in the blanks kind of screwed me a little bit. Because I assume if you had the Bat brand, the reason why people were dying was that you were a stooge. You gave information. Yeah. So I thought, okay, you're giving information to the Bat. People don't want, don't like that, so they're killing you. Right. It turns out, no, KGB is setting up Batman to make him look like a fucking dick. Yep, yep. Through Lex Luthor, right. who's saying, okay, you're going to go kill these people. And it looked like C.T. Flesher to me who was doing the killing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> God damn. Don't go. Yeah. But uh, so this, again, it just adds to to the whole movie. And Clark at one point even says, I, I think the the cops may be helping Batman in Gotham because yeah. they don't they don't give a shit that that these inmates are, are killing each other over a bat brand. They're like, okay, well, guess what? You're next. Yeah, and there's Kinda even like a little cartoon or something in the police station. Yeah, political cartoon. Yeah, a little political cartoon about the cops and Batman. Yeah. So then Clark is asking the de- the deputy behind the desk an information about Santos, and she's like, I can't give that information. There's a crying baby in the background, and some guy gives him the cool, hey, bro, head nod. Right. <laughs> like, hey. Oh, I got you. Yeah, man, I got you. <laughs> you look hot, you know? So, <laughs> hey, over there. And it turns out that Santos' girlfriend, and not her wife, not his wife, because Clark <laughs> says, Miss Santos... <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm not. Right. I'm not his wife, uh, but you know he has a child, and the yeah. kid's still I know, screaming. I know what he did, but, but he's still good or something. That, yeah, that but, part was kind of weird. But he, yeah, he, I know what he did. I was like, "Fuck!" If you knew what he did, you're actually be in jail too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, sex trafficking, <laughs> and you knew about it. Yeah. And anyway, but and so she has a great quote where she says, "Men like that, words don't stop him. You know what stops him? A fist." Yeah. And so this is kind of building up now Clark's character about Batman. Because she's bitching, oh, the bat is the judge, the jury, the executioner. Yeah. How is he the one supposed to judge who lives and dies? So you have this kind of parallel between Superman getting mm-hmm. blamed, saying uh, who who he thinks is important to save. Right. And then Batman, who he thinks should die. Yeah. Yeah. And people said, oh, these are it's a dark Superman and a dark Batman fighting each other. There's no differences between the two. Yeah, that was a lot of the, the bitching and complaining about this movie. Well, in the Ultimate Edition, hey, they give you a little bit more to kind of separate the two if you can figure it out in the in the theatrical part. But again, why why did they remove this scene? Like, yeah. it, it was so great, and you see, this is the part where where Clark is reading through the articles about how the Bat Brand leads to deaths, and so it's kind of you know fueling it a little bit more. He talked to the guy in the apartment building, all this stuff that that's fueling it. He sees the political cartoon. He's piecing it together that, okay, the cops are even in on it. They they don't even care. And then and then this part with the sex trafficker's girlfriend or whatever, baby mama. Yeah, <laughs> whatever the, the baby is. mama. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so she has that quote. Again, this is helping uh, <laughs> Clark's motivations towards hating Batman. Yeah. That he needs to stop this guy or at least warn him, mm-hmm. which he does later on. And 
now you get and it keeps moving the movie and now it has time to breathe you yeah. kind of get these feelings that okay this is setting up a lot right you're, you're getting a lot of motivations here set up yeah on both sides which was done so well now with lex yeah yeah, lex's yeah. All, all three sides yeah you got lex's motivations batman's motivations coming in now clark's motivations mm-hmm. for all their thing all the stuff that they're doing yeah there's another part with the again there was some great humor with perry white where you find out that, and I had kind of, in the theatrical version, I'll back up a little bit, Clark goes to this library fundraiser or whatever whatever it right. was. And I was kind of like, okay, well, that that's a, somewhat of a plot convenience. You know, may, maybe he was just the reporter who was assigned to it. No, you find out that Lex Luthor actually invited him by name. Well, he said some guy, some rich guy, must have had a, uh, invited you by name. Like, he says somebody wanted him yeah, there, Perry but he doesn't White. say exactly Lex Luthor. Right. But, oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says somebody wanted you there because they like nerds. Yeah, something. yeah, must have a hard on for nerds, nerds or, or something, something. Like that. yeah. And again, this has humor, but yeah. it's been cut out, and Perry had the best lines. If I was Lawrence <laughs> yeah. Fishburne, I'd be pissed. Yeah, seriously. He had these great lines yeah these great lines and they cut it all out yeah and so but you get to you start to see how lex is just everyone's a a pawn in his chess game you know he's just moving all the pieces around it's fitting perfectly i'm gonna invite these two people which then also leads to the part where he you know he does the little chess slap to clark and says whoa do not pick a fight with this person yeah and he knows already who he is oh yeah and so that this scene that they cut out where he specifically invites Clark by name to this banquet. Yep. You get this idea then out of the motivations. Right. Lex knows who Batman is. Lex knows who Superman is. Mm-hmm. And he he invites Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Because Alfred's like, oh, you don't have to break in. You've been invited. Yeah. And then you get the scene later on where Perry's telling him, oh, some ner- somebody likes nerds or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And so now Clark is there and you can see this now. He knows. You get the idea right then and there that Lex knows who these guys are and yep. he's putting them together. Yeah. He's causing conflict already now between Bruce and Clark. Right. That's eventually going to lead to the fight. Yeah, which also fills in a little bit more. A lot of people complained about Lex being the one who knows about all the metahumans, you know, the Flash, Cyborg, and stuff like that. Not only, he knows about everybody. Oh, yeah. And he, he has so much, so many disposable resources that he, he's able to gather all this information about all these different people, not just the, the additional members of the justice league he knows about clark about bruce that they're superman and batman and has all this information and he's also toying with them and get and he's going to get them to fight yeah and it it just adds a whole lot more to the to this already good movie makes it even better well now we're getting into the capital scene where Mm -hmm. where you see some things this is where some of the things came in that i was like well okay that's really weird because now you find out that that june finch woman also knows about lex luther's plot Right, because now the this was such a great part. I yeah, I about lost it when when I saw the scene. I'm like, why, why you cut this? This is so great because it adds to her going in and she has to speak in front of these people. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but this part just just fired me up because she's walking with an assistant or something like that, and then she finds out that Lex paid this African woman or. Threatened her, threatened her, uh, yeah, paid you. her, and and gave her a script and everything mm-hmm. of exactly what to say. Even though her parents are fine, they're alive, yeah. and wherever the hell they're at, and she sets this all up. And then I remember in the theatrical cut when Lex pops out and she was walking down, the, she does kind of this little slant walk thing, like "Hey, right," like looking at him. I'm like, "What the fuck kind of introduction is that?" Yeah, like in the theatrical it's, it's, version, it's awkward. I thought that was so <clears throat> weird, but now you kind of see it because she's talking shit about him. Yeah, and then also, boom, he's boom, right he's in front right of there. her. Yeah, and so she's like, "Oh, hey," yeah, <laughs> like yeah, and and she's starting to realize she's starting to piece together like, "Oh shit," like he's up to something. And then she goes in and she has to speak in front of everyone, which when I was watching the scene in the, in the theatrical version, I, I was slightly confused as to why she all of a sudden gets really nervous when she sees the pee. Yeah. You know, that I, I, I felt the, like she the, had a fear factor challenge. <laughs> yeah. Chug, chug, yeah. Chug. You're going to have to drink it. But no, it, it, you start to see she's piecing it all together and she may even know that something's about to happen. She doesn't know what, but that's why she starts to get nervous and she's just trying to hold it together. Like, okay, I have to carry through this whole thing. But she sees the empty seat, Lex Luthor's empty seat. Leather chair. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Yep. She, you know, starts to pan through the things. She sees the cup of piss. 
and and all these different things and she knows oh fuck something something's not right right and then boom yeah you, you know the building goes up and he clear when he's doing here is you're seeing him now clear out all the loose ends mm-hmm. he clears out the whole capitol building which is everybody that knew about his stuff yeah. about him trying to get the import license for the kryptonite and then just before that another scene they cut out was the African woman getting hunted or uh, being uh, right. stopped by the yeah. KG beast? Yeah, and they're at the train station, and for some reason she stands perfectly at the very, very edge of the tra- <laughs> tracks, yeah. Yeah. and he's just like slides up behind her all <laughs> smooth and everything yep. and then boop <laughs> and then he just shoves her in front of the train nothing they don't show anything so i don't think that adds to the rated r at no. all so now you see that he's clearing out loose ends yeah and he's getting rid of and he even got rid of his assistant because you can't i guess he didn't even trust her yeah a- anyone and i'm pretty sure after watching it back that the guy who allowed him all the access to everything to zod's body to the wrecked yep. ship was also in he the Capitol there. building. Yep. He was there as well. So, they cleared out everybody yeah, with it, that. It's just so great. It adds to this Lex Luthor so much. And and I, I was I was getting, you know, goosebumps and fired up watching this this movie because you're starting to see like, ah, what a little prick. You know, he he's it's And it just makes sense now. Him. I remember in our original review that no one listened to. <laughs> yeah. Um that I was saying that I was kind of confused because at the very end when they show the Superman's dead paper, spoilers, mm-hmm. Perry White opens it up and it gives uh, the reason why Clark is dead. And then next to it showed Lex Luthor being arrested for capital bombing. Mm-hmm. And of all the things he did, I was like, why is he being arrested for that? Right. I, I couldn't understand why he was being arrested for that because that to me was the last thing that you could ever tie him into. Mm-hmm. But then, because of the scenes they cut out, yep. it all fills out. out later on. Because those forensic scientists played by Jenna Malone, which mm-hmm. everybody had rumors for. Yeah. Female Robin. Barbara she was Gordon. Be or- yeah. Oracle. <laughs> she was <laughs> going to be all these people, but she turned out just to be a basic forensic scientist. Yeah, which she had a, a great role. It wasn't, oh. wasn't what other people were thinking, but adds more to this movie. And you actually get to see a better side of, of Lois. And she's she you get to see her investigative reporter skills. She's useful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the big thing. Because my problem was in that whole movie, she seems so useless. Mm-hmm. And she still does the dumb thing at the end, throwing the spear in the water, then digging back up. <laughs> so that still didn't help. But whatever. And but she's actually useful now. Yeah, she's yep. actually doing research. She's actually helping out, and she's figuring things out. Right. The you can even kind of see that she somehow has an in with the police department. And, you know, because the guy's like, hey, you need to hurry up here when she's going through the Keith, um, Keith's guy, which is uh, another scene a- they apartment cut out. building. Yep. Yeah. And and she she starts to piece together herself like, wait a minute, he didn't realize he was going to die. He's got a fridge full of food. Yeah. yeah he just got groceries and uh, a couple other things. And she's like, he wasn't planning to die. Yeah. And then she gets a call from the Jenna Malone. Uh, yeah, the Jenna Malone character. character yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, whatever. The forensic scientist. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and and she says, hey, we. Based on the crime scene, the wheelchair was lined with lead. You you figure that whole thing out. And he couldn't see. So that way, Superman couldn't see, Mm -hmm. which I kind of thought was a little weird that Lois would know that. I kind of get that Lex would know that because he's doing all this research on him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess maybe just one of these days, uh, she was wearing lead underwear. And, and Clark is like, "What the fuck, man? Yeah, you can't see." Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, uh, this was actually going back to the beginning of of this review. I started reading online. This was a scene that people were bitching about: is the details of well, in this universe, it's never been established that he he can't see through lead. So how would Lux know that, and how would Lois know that? It's believable to me that Lois would know that because he. Superman probably figured out at some point in his life, oh, fuck, I can't see through lead. Yeah, things and are painted I, with lead paint. Yeah. yeah. Lead so, bricks. Yeah, exactly. If you, uh, there was some great comedy gold of me saying lead brick wall <laughs> in reference to the Superman one that no one will hear. So it's, it's, it's gone forever. <laughs> Lucky me. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And so this was just another one of those things that, that people were bitching about. So I, I guess this movie still gives people reason to, to complain. But I, I think that at some point, Superman probably figured out, I can't see through lead. I'm sure he told Lois. And I'm sure somewhere along along the lines, Lex figured it out as well. You know, do, doing a bunch of research. Fuck, we don't know that someone, well, that even Lois, did the report that she did from Superman 1. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there is, he is doing research. He does have access to the Kryptonian body. They apparently have been doing 
research on General Zod this whole time. Right, yeah. So who knows what they've learned. I mean, yeah. they learned about the kryptonite mm -hmm. by watching his cells uh, degenerate from the touch of the kryptonite. So who who knows what else they learned from that body? Like, right. The abilities to do things. I mean, it's kind of a stretch to say, hey, a dead body can't see through lead. <laughs> right. But yeah, it, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows what they could do with science yeah. these days? So it's I, amazing. I, yeah. I just thought it was kind of shitty, you know, another thing people are bitching about. But it was a great scene. Added a little bit more. It showed, you know, Lois being a great investigative reporter. And, and now you can also, it pieces together a little bit more of Lex had he known that that lead was a weakness of Superman, Superman felt guilty for that. I, yeah. he, he said he tells Lois, "I didn't see it because I wasn't looking." Well, no, you didn't see it because you fucking couldn't see it, right? <laughs> so. and, see, and then another part they cut out. He's actually saving people from the Capitol building that just blew right. up. Right. He's putting them out there, but this EMT kind of gives them this weird look, like, "Hey, thanks." Like, yeah. they're starting to question whether or not he did something, and, and he kind of feels awkward. He's like, "Ah," and so he flies away. Before it made him look like a dick, he just flies away. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's a it's a great part because he you know kind of looks around and he's like. I don't even know what to do, and these EMTs don't even really trust me. So that's where he gets frustrated, looks over at, at Lois, and then flies off. You yeah. know, and so it's it's a great, doesn't save a whole lot of time. You know, add, adds a, a little bit more to the movie. Adds a lot more to the movie, actually. Well, you're just and, getting this conflict. You're starting. Yeah. You, you're starting to understand more and more the conflict that Batman, or excuse me, that Superman is having with being Superman. Mm -hmm. he, they. People said that this Superman never saves anybody. They had a whole saving montage they put right. in the movie for you. Yeah. He's pulling a boat. He saves that people from the De La Morte fire that, you know, the down in Brazil or wherever the hell that was. Mm -hmm. The fire, the building. He's saving the, what is it, the Russian rocket The he grabs right. yeah. the top of it. Yeah. And the whole time they're having up. one of the best conversations I've ever heard in a yeah. movie. I, I don't care what you say about the script. This part where they have uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and a couple other guys talking about the concept of Superman. Mm -hmm. Who is he? What is he? Is he a Jesus character or not? I think it's some of the best writing I've ever yeah. heard in a movie. Great dialogue. And it's, like you said, it's through this entire montage of him saving uh, all these different people. And the, uh, one of the guys says, is he a Jesus character? Is he a devil character? Or is he just a guy trying to do the right thing? Yeah. I mean, it's like, Great. this whole part I'm is I'm getting amazing. chills right now. <laughs> oh, no, that, I, I love that part. I've yeah. watched it so many times. And then you got Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about how... Through time, we've become, humans have become less and less special. You know, we think we're special, and mm -hmm. now we find out that there's a Superman. Right. So now we're just we're just people here on a planet because yeah. there's something greater out there than us. Yeah. And it's just a great conversation. It's a real conversation yeah. of what you would see if there is a Superman right. in this yeah, world. Yeah, if an alien would show up and have all these powers, people, this is what people would be talking about. And this is a true conflict. This mm -hmm. is what people would talk about. Well, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I hope some people will talk about it. Yeah. Maybe Zack Snyder elevated our intelligence more, more yeah. than realistically. So now we go into the third act. So we start getting more into the third act. And then you got the part where Batman is gunning down the guys. Superman lands, knocks his car out, mm -hmm. tells him the bat is dead. So now you actually kind of get, because he's getting these pictures, judge, right. jury, executioner, which wasn't the theatrical cut, but you're like... This is the first motivation we've really right. seen yeah, exactly. in the theatrical cut of Judge, Jury, and Execution. So he just flies off and like, oh, I'm going to fuck up his car. Yeah. And so, <laughs> Which that was another, to me, that was hilarious when the Batmobile is driving back to, to the Batcave. It's and all it, wonky. Yeah. Like how, how no one laughed at that. I'm just, Well, at least not in our theater. Yeah. It's beyond me because I thought that was fantastic. And Anyways. So, yeah. So now you kind of get this motivation. It's building. It's building. It's mm -hmm. building. And then after the Capitol building... And now Batman's really pissed because shit's just going down. That gets the letters that Lex has apparently been intercepting from uh, the legless guy. Right. And <laughs> yeah, Wallace Keith. <laughs> yeah, Wallace Keith. And so he's been and then he writes, so you know, you're, you let your family die and all this stuff. And it's just okay. Now Batman is into it. Superman is into this. This yeah. is what's going to happen. Yeah. And it's the Lex... build, build to the conflict. And one of the reasons why that was manipulated from Lex Luthor even more, but why they actually fight each other. So Lex Luthor's plan is all coming together now. And again, why they cut this out? So Batman gets so pissed. He goes to Lex Corp. He goes to one of the Lex Corp buildings, steals mm -hmm. the kryptonite. So as you're kind of watching it, as you see Lex come in their building, they're looking at security footage. Mm -hmm. And you see this awesome dive down grab of a guy and yeah. picks him up yeah. from Batman. Shoots up. It's like the shit in the Arkham game. Yeah. And that's like three seconds. Yeah. 
Why and, cut that and, out? And then, then the that scene gets even better because it pans to Lex and he's he gets this evil smirk again yeah. of my my plan's working. It's all piecing together perfectly. He wanted Batman to go and steal the kryptonite. That's yep. exactly what he wanted to happen because he knew eventually, okay, Batman is going to kill Superman, which is exactly what I want, you know, or Superman's going to kill Batman, you know. Yeah, like, no, he's going to get what he he's manipulating these guys and and it's all coming together. Yeah. And again, why they cut that scene? I don't get it because that's like that would make the fucking Batman fans pop. Yeah. That would, that would make almost anybody that likes Batman pop. Because yeah. Because they played the games, people have seen it, and plus that's just always kind of what you always picture Batman doing. Yep, exactly. Well, and it's almost a direct take from the animated series. I, I can think of multiple right. parts where that happens. There's actually a GIF that I've seen online where they compare the two parts of Batman dropping down, and, and it looks just like that. And so it's some so great. fucking dildo <laughs> recorded, uh, took that out. I don't... Yeah. I don't understand why. Yeah, it's it that's beyond me. So then we start approaching the fight scene and uh, just kind of a quick segue here. If you didn't know this, the internet fucking lies. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Except for us. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what we're talking about, so we can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do any research. But there's everyone was talking about there's a scene where Superman after you know the back and forth with Luther Luther gives him more motivation to go kill the bat because he he takes his mom and people were saying oh well there's there's a part in the in the ultimate edition that will come out where Superman flies up and actually looks for his mom which I I that would give me more to go off of i was kind of making excuses for it anyways but no it actually wasn't in there at all yeah, so the, I, was, I was disappointed in that yeah the third act didn't really have much uh, much of any changes really mm-hmm. uh the fight scenes were pretty much exactly the way they were right and just kind of the random teleporting by wonder woman later on is still there right and the time and the the time continuity is off still it's like you, you know it only takes 25 minutes to do this right and she gets to the airport she's already boarding and anyway but so all that's still kind of yeah but now you got the fight between batman and superman mm-hmm. and i've heard people complain about this and this is i don't i don't get this i feel like people that talk about fighting in movies had never been in a fight people were like oh i wish that they would have showed some scenes where clark was trying to get batman on his side more more than what right. they show you know where he says bruce i was wrong and gets gets sonic wave Okay, so this is a young Superman. You, people keep forgetting that. Mm-hmm. And this is a real Superman. Right. I mean, Christopher Reeves was great and everything. His Clark Kent is awesome. But that is a very Boy Scout Superman. Right. This is a super a realistic Superman. Think about when you were younger. Think about what you did with your testosterone and yeah. everything built up as a man. All right? You get hit by 50 cab bullets. You get hit by a sonic wave. You know what? You're going to be like... Fuck you, you asshole. Yeah, exactly. And he already hates Batman anyways. He's just, he does his Boy Scout thing by showing up and going, okay, let me talk to him. Maybe he'll help me out because this is, I, I need his help in order to save my mom. And it doesn't take long to where he's like, okay, no, fuck you. I'm, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just like, I'm, well, he doesn't necessarily try to kill him. No, no. If he could have, he would have. Yeah, he says <laughs> that. Stay down. If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. So he's trying to prove a point here. He is the man. Yeah. And then Batman's coming back. You know, you think you're brave. You're not brave. Men, Men are, are brave. brave. Yeah. And it's it, think about it as, uh, I mean, I know some people may not be able to relate to this, but just to me, this is kind of what a fight is. It's mm-hmm. full of testosterone. You're not thinking clearly. Right. You know, and so there's moments in your life when you're in a fight, you know, you see me in a couple fights <laughs> yeah. and you just don't think straight. People will play with, oh, this is a stupid Superman because he got hit by a kryptonite bullet twice. Right. Okay. When you're doing stuff, when you're in the middle of a fight and you're finally getting going and the testosterone's building yeah, up and adrenaline's, adrenaline's going, going yeah. and stuff, you're not thinking clearly. He's thinking, oh, I'm going to hit him before he can get that thing loaded. Right. I'm knock him down. And I'm getting my speed back and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not going to just stand here or try to dodge it. I'm right. going to get his ass. Well, and and to him, he's super fast anyways. He has yeah. super speed. So maybe he you know, didn't really realize how, how much it was going to take for him to get over there. But Yeah, and he jumps. He, he still hits him. Yeah. He busts up his mask and everything, but he gets hit by the bullet. Right. So... You know, I just just think about it. If you've been in a fight, you know, you do things that may not be the best ideas. Yeah. I remember I was in a fight 
on the ground in an ice rink and <laughs> you were there yeah and i was fighting with one guy on the ground and i knew somebody else was coming up and i rolled over and i kicked the dude in the stomach yep. with a skate a little we were you know younger kids kicked yeah. him in the stomach with an ice skate <laughs> could have killed him <laughs> yeah. not the best idea in the world <laughs> but i was just trying to to beat his ass so um so that was the yeah, ultimate solution yeah that was the ultimate solution was turn around and kick a dude right in the gut with an ice skate <laughs> yeah. so nothing happened the guy's alive yeah yeah sort of as anyway as much as we know <laughs> yeah i saw him twitching <laughs> so but you know so don't sit there and judge this guy because you think that he should be an adult and sit down and have tea and crumpets with him right yeah and exactly kid, let's, like, let's talk this through while, come on man come it, on stop it just, just stop it yeah man. just stop well, it. while his you know his mom's about to die i i, I wish the uh the fight scenes would have gone a little bit longer there was a, there was one point where i actually thought there was going to be more dialogue with batman you know when when he has his his boot on superman's throat he's about to stab Stab him him. it seemed like there was a little bit more point of dialogue in there and maybe Zack snyder even cut it out because it it felt like it was building a little bit more and then boom no it's it's just the same yeah they didn't do anything to elaborate on the yeah i I, I was kind of kind of disappointed in that in the the fight scene and even the fight scene with with doomsday i was i was wanting more this movie could have been three hours and 15 minutes for me and i would have been fine with it (laughs) yeah no the the doomsday fight had a couple extra things in it we see him throwing things at the helicopters jumping and going through a helicopter instead of just jumping onto the building like before I it's like oh we already paid for the CGI we've already rendered this thing scene all right but now nah, let's not have him jump through the helicopter now yeah oh, oh that's where it, it turns the R yeah that's the R rating right blowing there blowing up a helicopter with people <laughs> yeah. in it and then throwing a sign or something at, at another helicopter blowing up I don't so you know. still have the stupid moment where Lois throws the spear in the water and then people drown because they <laughs> yeah. can't swim and but then there's a couple of parts that they did cut out of the doomsday fight or they altered we'll go mm-hmm. with altered there's the part where doomsday and superman are having the laser eye struggle they're having this cool laser eye beam as a dragon ball z fan that looks fucking awesome you yeah. got beam struggles and i'm like hell yeah and then doomsday wins and in the theatrical cut you just see superman go across the ground and he flies up and he does his little muscle flexing thing right <laughs> but in the, this version you see his ass getting dragged across the ground by the yeah. laser eyes what? Why? Why right. cut that out? You show his face. You're showing him acting. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's actually acting because you know the biggest problem is that no one sees any expression on this guy's face. Yeah. And this guy's acting now, and then you cut it out because you're a fucking numb nut motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's just, there's so much in this movie that that was cut out that shouldn't have been. And so then, and again, where they cut out the people's voices, which have no effect on time, was where Wonder Woman somehow is magically on a plane after like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And she's on there and she's leaving because she sees what's going on on these live TV broadcasts on the seats somehow. <laughs> Great airlines. Yeah, it's and, luxurious. Yeah. Tur- and so as she's leaving, you actually hear, because I was laughing before. I was like, yeah, right. They're going to fucking take off with this doomsday character just thrashing things. Right. This is stupid, but you actually hear the pilot come on the broadcast and say, oh, respect, or there's some difficulties right now. We're not going to be taken off. And I'm like, oh, okay, so they're not actually taken off. They're just trying to keep everybody seated. Yeah. Because he says, everybody, please stay seated. And then yeah. she takes Don't off. Don't panic. So then the, sec- the, the stewardess is like, oh, Miss Prince, Miss Prince. And she's walking away. So it kind of adds to that scene just mm-hmm. a little bit. Because before, it's like, who gives a shit if she walks away? Right. <laughs> so you're not taken off. Yeah. <laughs> and so that part was uh, really weird. I don't know why they cut that out. Yeah. Again, why yeah. slap someone in the right. face? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it it doesn't. It adds to the scene, but doesn't help with the timing. If they're trying to get this to two and a half hours long, I, I don't know. It's it's just weird. There was another great part that they cut out as well that kind of adds more to the funeral and how people were feeling yeah. after Superman dies. And you you see all the empty offices, closed businesses. People were they, they wanted to express their gratitude and 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 go to these funeral services that batman kind of makes fun of yeah <laughs> says clown. That's, that's, a, that's a joke they're they're just bearing an empty box or whatever he says yeah. but but then then you have also you know you see people's faces now you see people from man of steel you see that uh, general ferris or major ferris the chick from right yeah from man of steel but you see her in the superman burial right and then now you see perry white and a couple other people at the clark one like you actually get a perspective now of 
who's where and, you know, the people mourning the two situations right. going on right now. Yeah, and I actually had wondered if Perry White knew a little bit more, if he knew that, that Clark was Superman. Because there's a part when Lois is trying to get a, a helicopter and he she's running up to Perry White and he goes, a helicopter, we can't even afford a damn bike. Right. And, and then she goes, it's not for a story or something like that. And he kind of gets this look on his face like, Okay, get the helicopter on the roof. Yeah, he knows something. Yeah. There's a good chance Perry White might know. Yeah, and then, and then he shows up to the Clark funeral, and, and you, you get to start, like you said, you start to see more of uh, these, not just his close friends caring about him, but but the world all together, you know, and, uh, and Metropolis, and they're mourning for, for this guy's loss, and it just adds to, or for the loss of Superman, and it just adds to... The, the, the whole the movie you and, actually feel now yeah. towards Superman's death. His death did mean something more yeah. than what they kind of showed in the theatrical cut. I mean, you can fill in the blanks all you want, but there's still a little bit of like, nah, we have the reason why he died. At least this one now, you get this feeling like, oh, yeah. he did it. You know, he got his convert. He got his. He had his talk with his ghost dad, <laughs> right. and he realizes now he needs to. You know, you can't help everybody. Some things are going to go wrong, yeah. but still do your best, save what you can. And so he did. Yeah. Ghost dad, save the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the end of the day. So he went through this. They cut out all the dialogue to build a basic story and structure yeah. and left just substance. Right. And it's kind of like a Transformers movie. Yep, There's no exactly. dialogue. There's right. just a couple explosions, a couple cool fights, yep. some CGI. They thought that would make, which it, it made a good amount of money, but it could have done a lot better. By not doing this three-hour version, WB left money on the table. Mm -hmm. They left money on the table because when this movie opened up against all the bad reviews, all the crap against it, it was already two hours and 30 minutes yeah. long. So it's already longer than any other DC film that's been out, uh, been out so far. Yeah. And it still made $167 million its opening weekend. Right. And Civil War, which had all the hype for it, Month out reviews that were nothing but positive. Yep. Ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Uh, all, all the pre screenings, people oh. were were loving it. Has all the characters that people love: Captain America, Iron Man, has Spider Man. They brought Spider Man into yep. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Had all this, all this crap going for it. Built in universes, only makes one hundred and seventy nine million dollars. Yeah. Twelve million dollar <laughs> difference. Right. That's it. You had your iconic characters, the two most iconic superheroes in the in the world, yeah, going at it, and it still made one hundred sixty seven million dollars, even though you had all this against you. Right. You make that bitch three hours, and it's this version, which gets way better reviews. Yeah. Which wouldn't be sitting right at a twenty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes, maybe twenty eight, <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least, I'll give it a twenty eight. It'll turn at least one guy, <laughs> and so it would be a lot better. And you would have had that going through the next couple weekends, yeah. And you would have hit that one billion dollar mark. Yeah, you absolutely. would have hit the marks that you wanted. Yeah, but you left it on the table for thirty minutes. And now they're questioning all this stuff, and and people are asking for Zack Snyder's head and. Uh, yeah. yeah and all this, oh, we, now it's humor. We're going for humor. There's humor in this movie. It was just cut out. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Perry White had great lines in this. Yeah. Great lines, and it was all cut out. So, once again, if you haven't seen this version, please go look at it. Yeah. Clear your mind. Don't think about all the other reviews. Think about ours. <laughs> and we're the only ours. one that matters. Yes. And two schnupps in a room. <laughs> and just... Real, watch the movie and realize that this is the movie. The third act is a little choppy. I give you that. Mm -hmm. it, there's some parts. I wish they would have cleaned up the Martha scene. Yeah. It, there, I feel like there's somewhere, there's probably some scene they did shoot that they've left out that probably would have cleaned that Martha scene up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's showing a scene of Clark at like a Hall of Records in Gotham looking up because he knows by this point that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Mm-hmm. Because he heard him at that uh, party, the yeah. Lexus party. Well, even when he lands to talk to him, he says, Bruce, you right. have to listen to me. So maybe show him at one point when he's doing all that research on the Batman in Gotham. Show him in the Hall of Records in Gotham, like, looking up and he sees uh, Bruce Wayne's parents shot in front of the theater, blah, blah, blah. Martha Kent, mm -hmm. you know, shot. Martha Wayne. Yeah, see? Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Martha! So... And it showed, like, Martha Wayne, you know, shot, and, and, and you know, the dad shot as well, because I can't think of his name right there. Thomas. Thomas Wayne. I was about to say Jonathan, because I was <laughs> thinking Superman. Superman. <laughs> and so, uh, and, you know, show him kind of doing this research, having him be more of a reporter on this, mm -hmm. and like, oh, okay, there's Martha Wayne died here, and Thomas Wayne died. All right. 
So, you know, something like that. Or maybe have a point where where kind of Batman snaps or something like that when he's talking to Alfred and be like, you know, Martha couldn't be saved or my mom couldn't be saved mm-hmm. or something to that effect. Like, show this a little bit more of this connection he has towards his mom, not just the fucking creepy vampire guy that blows out of the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the coffin. Yeah, man bat. <laughs> yeah, the man bat. <laughs> man bat's alive. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, the, there were there were some parts that I wish they would have filled in a little bit, a little bit more. I liked the extended part with Batman and Luther at at the end, where again, why cut that? Yeah, out? It, you find out that he somehow has an in at Arkham, and Luther's going to be transferred to Arkham. Yeah, and and so I have some friends there that'll be happy to see you. I mean, yeah. it's like oh yeah, shit, it's yeah. great. Which it, that touches on the Batman universe, all right. those villains and. Oh man! Maybe we'll see Lex and Suicide Squad. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. So with, with fucking Joker and yeah, once that that whole thing, just everything. You know, it's it's the Batman animated series and the and the Superman animated cartoon all all wrapped into one where you had uh, Luther and Joker together. Right. And now we're we'll probably see it live action. It, that, that was such a, a great part, and even you kind of see the the look on Joker or uh, Luther's face where he's like, oh fuck. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a little bit more, and then uh, and then he says, "Well, it's too late. It doesn't matter. The bell's already been rung." And, di- and this is one thing I want to clear up. He says the dinner bell has rung. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Okay. Mother boxes make ping noises. He's not talking about the mother box. He's right. talking about the dinner bell. He's hungry. Yeah. That's the He's ding, coming. ding, ding, ding. I've heard some people say, you know, mother boxes make a ping noise. It should be ping, <laughs> ping, ping. Yeah. He's not talking about a mother box, you motherfucker. <laughs> He's talking about a dinner bell. He says he's hungry. The dinner yep. bell has rung. Ding, 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 ding. He's talking about ringing a fucking dinner bell, you fucking jackasses. <laughs> yeah. If you pay attention and watch these fucking movies, you would fucking yep. know. <laughs> just, I, I just that when people keep stewing that stuff, I'm like, why are you yeah. talking? Yeah, they're pick, picking it apart for no reason. What does it matter anyways? Ding, 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 or ping, ping, ping. Yeah. Oh, mother box makes ping, ping, ping. Yeah. He should really be saying ping, ping, ping. They got that wrong. What a shitty movie. Yeah, damn it. They didn't even get the right noise right. <laughs> Fuckers. Yeah. So, I, I, I was, yeah. So, overall, I get, I bumped it up to an 8.1. <laughs> what? originally originally i gave it an eight but I'm so, <laughs> that's that still tells the line of what a b minus yes wow so, I, I at least i went from an 8.8 which would be around a b plus to a 9.0 solid nine out of ten with a minus roughly you know depending on how you want to that it might at least went up two points <laughs> <laughs> and a significant letter. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why it's only point one because it doesn't make fucking sense why they did this in the first place. They don't deserve a better movie yeah. for doing this in the first place. Yep. A realistic score score is I give it a I'm I'm in a B plus area now an eight point eight eight point seven. Cool. But I feel like it should be an eight point one. Yeah. Because that's just bullshit. <laughs> yeah. The what they did to this movie, what they did to Zack Snyder yeah. overall, whoever it was, the MPAA, the Warner Brothers executives, somebody, somebody yeah. royally fucked up. Yeah. Well, and like we touched on in our last review, and, and you actually brought this to my attention, it was supposed to be the three hours up until January. Yeah, it, that, it was January it was this February? year. It was changed this year. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what makes me lean towards the MPAA because yeah. they don't get these ratings until, you know, a couple months, you know, a few months out from mm-hmm. when the movie gets released. So it seems like to me that some of these changes were made. Like this was the movie. They had it scaled out. They thought they were going to meet the PG-13 rating. MPA came back and says, no, this is R. Well, Warner Brothers wants to meet the PG-13 rating. Yeah. So then somebody goes in there. They start chopping one scene. And they're like, well, this scene's not going to make sense now. So they keep chopping, chopping, I, I chopping, don't know. chopping. I, I think that that's if that's the case, that's a huge uh, overthought. Because they they easily could have just taken some of the blood out. You know, change, well, yeah, you don't, change you don't have to have the blood squibs. Yeah, I... From what I've read, and and this seems believable to me, that it was Warner Brothers was afraid to release a three-hour superhero movie. They didn't think, you know, there's there's no uh, long book like a Lord of the Rings. They don't have that type of fan base that's going to go see this. Which uh, they're just wrong on. Yeah, exactly. I guess and, all and, odds, and so, this movie made way more money than any other yeah. DC movie opening weekend. Yeah. And it almost made more money than any Warner Brothers movie. It just barely lost to Harry Potter. Right. And it was like the last Harry million Potter dollars. or something. Yeah, yeah. By the last Harry Potter. Yeah. Just imagine. You would have made... They would have made so much yeah. more money. I, I hope people were fired. Whoever was, was in... In control. Well, of that. Obviously, Just... something happened to where they're like, okay, this is going to be in control because now Jeff Johns is in control. They're doing. 
they kicked that one executive producer off that's been on a lot of the movies, mm-hmm. and he's been shifted somewhere else now. And so there's a lot of work that's been done. So we'll talk about yeah. that stuff in a later episode. Right. Though. Just keep. Yeah, you're right. We'll talk talk about it more, but just please keep Zack Snyder in control. Yeah, I, I'm not. He obviously doesn't have the full control because they brought in uh, Home Dude, whatever his name. I can't even think of his name. Who's uh, overseeing now the cinematic? Jeff Johns. Okay, Jeff Johns. Okay, yeah. So they they brought him in. Uh, I hope that Zack Snyder, he's a producer on Suicide Squad. Hopefully, he still is up there. Gets a, a take. He can give feedback on different movies and make sure that it makes sense in the universe that he's already built wonderfully. And please do not just castrate him and <laughs> take him out of this completely. If Warner Brothers wants to make a two hour and 30 minute movie or two hour and 20 minute movie, then write a script for that. Right. This script was written for a three hour movie. Yeah. Clearly. And maybe even a little bit more because there's still some parts. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I think it could have gone 315 and I would have been fine with it. <laughs> oh yeah. I would... I'd be fine with a four-hour version, really. Yeah. I mean, I I'm not an AD. I'm not really an ADD person. If as long as something's interesting, right, I well, will watch it all the way through, no matter from, how long it is. From what I've heard, it was a four-hour movie, right? Which is is pretty standard, I guess, in Hollywood. Right. You go four hours, and then the director gets his cut, which was this version, right. and then it it got butchered by the studio or whoever, uh, whoever decided, hey, you need to change it, and and here we are. But yeah, just a, a great. Great movie overall. Uh, I'm excited to see where this universe goes. Uh, I, I can't wait for Suicide Squad and them to start building things together. I'm really excited for Wonder Woman, uh, mm-hmm. for yep. for Justice League. Justice League's going to be great. Yeah, I'm just, I, I can't wait. Oh, and then, yeah, that's another little scene, but we got to see that two weeks, or a week after the movie was released. You have the Steppenwolf. Right. The, uh, the guy that's the right-hand man of yeah. Darkseid. Yeah. So... I think he's like the, he's like his uncle or something. He's a right hand man commander. Shit, I didn't so, know that. So we're gonna have an epic throwdown just before the big throwdown yep. with Dark Side. Yeah. So this I I believe that's already pretty much been leaked and positive right there. That Stephen Wolf's gonna be the uh, well, it has to be. It's, it's now a part of the movie. Warner Brothers put it out like you said shortly after the movie. Right. Uh, of hey, here's again, a deleted that, movie, that scene. scene was like 14 seconds. Yeah. Why cut it out? Yeah, and it also shows that okay, they can tie more to Lex Luthor because they found him in the fucking ship. Right. You know, talking to this dude. I'm like, oh fuck. Well, yeah, it was a hologram. <laughs> or or learning. Ship. Yeah. Yeah. He's learning yeah. about this stuff with these mother boxes and everything. He could have been talking to him. Yeah, he he's, he's fucking crazy. Yeah, he probably was talking to him. Yeah. All right, well, that concludes our reevaluation of the extended cut of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Once again, fuck the MPAA, fuck the critics, and fuck you, Warner Brothers, for screwing this up in the beginning. You lost so much money by fucking doing this. You, you fucking idiots. Dildos. <laughs> I hope you get fucked in the ass by this extended cut. Yeah. And so, that makes you money. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you double dip because you know people are going to buy yep, this digital yep. version. You know people Smart are going to buy the Blu-ray. You bastards. So I, maybe that's the ploy from the beginning. Anyway, yeah. they make a shitty version, and then everybody wants to see the good version <laughs> yeah. twice. I don't know to buy the digital, and then the later on the the Blu-ray. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. Well, that concludes this. Now we're done. We got to stop rambling. We're ranting on and going on and on and on. So. Follow us on all social media at Comic Movie Marks. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also view our shows on YouTube. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube page at Comic Movie Marks. And review us and like us and love us on iTunes. Yes. Maybe, maybe we'll even read your comments. If anybody ever needs a comment. <laughs> if there is a comment, we will read it. Because yes. it's going to be the first one. Yes. The first legit one. Lucky you. Oh, you want to be first? Anybody? Leave a comment. Anybody. (laughs) Cricket, please leave a comment.